Hi, welcome to Zafira and Venturi Gallery in Midtown, New York. Uh, due to the uh, COVID, uh, we do not have an actual uh, show, but we have a virtual show, which is probably even better because we're going to bring to you nine different artists, three of whom are here. And we even have the composer uh, who we'll introduce later, and he's going to be here composing, he's talking about composing music for art videos. So basically, this show is called Life Abstractions. It's got hundreds of viewers already, and it's going to be uh, on till October 4th. 2020. Uh, so basically, Safira and Ventura, uh, the, and the show is actually uh, uh, curated by uh, Safira, is bringing these cutting edge artists to you to show you the various forms of abstraction, like our life has not been abstracted enough already in 2020. But artists are artists. We're home and we're in the studios and the galleries. We got Neil Kerman and his gallery there, and we've got uh, tonight, Garrett Opeland Hampel, raise your hand, Garrett, uh, from Germany. We've got um, not, you'll see his art, Lawrence Armstrong from California, Pedro Gallardo from the Dominican Republic, Shaolun Batar from Mongolia, Elizabeth Wellet from Spain, Geraldine Lally from France, Marta Boniman, say hi, Marta. She's from Brazil. Uh, we're going to interview uh, her later, and Neil will introduce her in full and Shout Sosunda from Japan, and Marcelo Pavan from Italy. And then, of course, Dan Robinson, the composer, uh, will have a, will, will clean up the show at the end. Uh, <laughs> but first, before we get into any of these interviews, we're going to show you a two-minute video on all their art. Take it away, Erica. Oh, so while we're waiting for this, we, Abe and I would like to know that we interview artists every Thursday evening, unfortunately, or not fortunately, tonight it's Wednesday evening. And we'll wait another minute for the video. If it doesn't come on, we'll be more than happy to start the program. Wow, it's really amazing, all the digital art um, presentation. We'd like to um, welcome Shalom Batar, who just um, arrived. And Shalom, we're going to put everyone backstage in the meantime, except for Garrett, and we're going to interview Garrett. 
and we will see all of you later. Thank you for joining us. And backstage it is. Hi, Garrett. Hi, Garrett. How are you? Here's Garrett. Garrett. Um, I think the camera might have frozen. Erica, are you there? So let's, Erica? let's get Marta on. Well, yes. one second. Okay, Erica, yes. um, Garrett is frozen yes. and she doesn't hear us, so she there's no movement. Mm -hmm. Should we move on to someone else and come back right. to Garrett? Let's go yes. to Marta. So can we move Marta. on to Marta? Yes. Okay. Here you are, Marta. Hello. So basic, basically, I think there's some uh, difficulties with the cameras and everything, and um, perhaps it's because everyone's in foreign countries. So anyone, this, everyone, this is Marta Bonamont. And what an exciting life you have, Marta. I have to tell you that. A Brazilian visual artist, a dancer and teacher at the University of Rio de Janeiro, has a degree in physical therapy, from what I understand, a master's degree in health sciences, has a PhD in sociology, works with disabled and non-disabled people for 30 years, directs a dance troupe and theater, and studies painting in Rio de Janeiro. Your paintings explore different techniques, materials, and subjects, both in abstract and figurative images. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about your paintings itself, the different techniques and materials that you use? Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening, Marta. Uh, I think there are no frontiers between my creative work and what I am. I like to explore different uh, materials, shapes, colors, textures, and when I dance, when I paint, uh, it's what I said, there are no frontiers, so I can use ink to make a canvas, but I also can move myself and ask people to move themselves and use like fabric, color, colored fabric, and for me, it's also painting. Let, so me ask you, let, let me ask you this question. Does the dancing help your art or does your art help your dancing? I think both of them, they, they help each other. Uh, dancing is but, also art, and also, it's a form of art. It's, it has to do with body. The body, is it's me, I am my body, so, uh, that's me, the, my body, that pants, and we have our joints. And at the way you move your arms, your legs, that's uh, all it, it, that. it leads you sure. to, to I'm, some I'm paths. Glad, I'm glad that your body moves with your art. My <laughs> art flows, yeah. and my body does not. We'll but sit anyway, up there and watch you. But you anyway, can go to my class. Now everything is online. Yeah. When I'm in Brazil, I will come. In the meantime, I believe you brought a video yep. with your dance and the um, fabrics are also paintings. So if we could yes. see the video, please, we're excited to see it for you. Here we
Very nice, beautiful. Eight. It looks like Salome and with Rita Hayworth. Remember Salome, the dance of the seven veils? They've been doing yeah. that movie for about 50 years already. It's a gorgeous, really, really beautiful. Can I ask a question? You you talk about environmental destruction, and you, you've had actually uh, worked on an individual exhibition with Gignard Subterra, Gignard, I don't know how to pronounce it, Underland. Your own paintings show some of the devastation of nature. So how do you react to that? Uh, you know, 2015, the town of Mariana in Minas Gerais state. Tragedy. Uh, yes, uh, and in, uh, unfortunately, Brumadinho, another town in Minas Gerais state, it was still worse than the Mariana disaster. So uh, Guignard is a very important Brazilian painter that painted uh, landscapes from Minas Gerais. So this special work is... Uh, they are boxes with uh, Guignard's images and land, and uh, uh, sand and land. Uh, and so it's a way of saying that the, the, all, all this, the, uh, the, 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 what happened there, right. The situation. Covered, covered something we had in our minds about Minas Gerais that has the Baroque, the Baroque churches and landscapes, very beautiful mountains. And let me ask you, Marta, let me ask you a question. Did you bring any uh, paintings with you? Does Erica have any of your paintings? Sure. I, I, I have just this. I can't bring now, but I have no. this door. Okay. This door is Copacabana Beach. Ah, Copacabana where you have, Beach. Yes, this is my door, nice. my, my bedroom door. And That's your bedroom I, door? Yes. The, it I, makes it inviting I, I, to want to I come am, in. I am six Leo, months. Watch out. <laughs> I am here inside the apartment for six months, almost six months. We are. So I we are. So I have painted the whole apartment. You painted all the door of the doors. Months? Yes. You painted that door in the last six months. Yes. Oh, sure. Wow. Because I can't go there to the beach. You, you I can't go to the beach. So I made my beach. This Very is my nice. beach. I, and this I, is oh, there it is. This is Clarice Lispector, a very important writer. There is, a, ah, yes, I, I have sent more. And this is very the word, nice. I, the title is Take Care, Let's Take Care of the World. Let's Take Care of the World, beautiful. And, and remember the Indian song from the video. They are the, the original people from America, North America, Central America, and South America. So let's take care of the words like the original people use it to take care. Yeah, for, it very indigenous, your, your, your style. And this, this is called uh, secret calligraphy. Maybe in Asia, it has something with Asia. Our friend from Mongolia, maybe, maybe there is something written there. And the other one is called If Pollock Was Born in Bahia, the last wow. one. This is, yes, If Pollock Was Born in Bahia, Brazil, maybe the dots would be uh, uh, not so fast. <laughs> and this is neuroscience. Neuroscience is the brain and all the connections uh, the cells pass information, electric and chemical information. Yeah. It's what is happening. It, this is happening yeah. with us now. Our so brains yes. are selling a lot of so what, so what I see is that you're really taking your degrees. Your physical therapy degree has all the movement. Your master's degree in the health sciences and sociology takes you into the brain. And you're focusing all of your work on 
really everything that your education has taught you, which I think is absolutely amazing. And while you're doing all of that, everything flows. You could see the yes. movements in the Asian um, calligraphy and you could see the flow up and down. Um, one question that Abe and I usually ask is, how has the pandemic affected your art? I think I, I have uh, painted much more because wow, yeah. I needed it. I needed You more. need a bigger apartment. <laughs> she's, in the, she's in the middle of painting your kitchen I, as we do. I, I went also, I am here, but yeah. my studio is in another town, in the other side of Guanabara Bay, that's called Niterói. And the name of the street is Va Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, nice. The Beautiful. street of, of my studio. So uh, my, my canvas, I couldn't stay with them here in Copacabana. So I brought them to Niterói, to my studio. Same because true. There is little space here. You are you are correct. You are right. And then there I can see more uh, nature and green spaces and the sky than here in my apartment. It's the only place I'm going is the studio. I, I don't go anywhere. Abe, hey, do you have another question? Because we're going to move on to Garrett no, in a minute. To, to Garrett, if we get her back, it was a pleasure speaking to you. Don't leave. We're going to have you back in the... And then end of the show also. So, uh, who, Erica, who, who do we have next? Do we have Garrett or are we going on to Shalom? Hi, Garrett. Hi. Hi, Garrett. So anyway, welcome. Hi. Garrett, I think your art is amazing. The colors you use are vibrant and brilliant. It's in the flowers, the houses, the villages you paint. So I read about you that you have an expression or a quote where there is art, there is life. Can you tell us what that means to you or the audience? Yes, it's uh, where there is art, there is life. And for me, art is uh, an expression of living, of feeling myself, and of course, of expressing myself. And it gives me a vibrant feeling. And... Uh, on the other hand, that's what I hope to give with my art, that people get the energy or people get the joy I'm trying to express. And yeah, that, that's what right. Some Somebody art. said on your website that looking at your art is like an explosion of beauty and vitality. But what I see is in the center of all your pieces, all your work, you leave a lot of light. You have a lot of bursts of color but you leave a lot of light in the center of it. Could you explain that? Is that you do that on purpose? I, I don't, I don't think I do it on purpose. I do it, you know, it because I'm, I'm an abstract painter, but I never think about what am I going to paint. I try to make a plan. I look at other things. I, I look around what did I see last week? And if there's something that really very much impresses me, it may come through. But normally in front of the canvas, I just start. And I always start with what just comes to my mind, with a color I see, a color I like, or I feel like, oh, this is so big and white, I have to make something darker. <laughs> And, well, uh, we know you're, you're, you're being interviewed by Neil Kerman, who's called the abstract chemist. He has powerful colors just jumping all over the place with tremendous energy. But I noticed the difference between you. You have a lot of beach colors. You know what I'm saying? Corals, pinks, turquoises. It kind of reminds me of Miami Beach. I don't know why, but when I saw some of your paintings, I mean, the ones that I saw by Erica, it just reminds me of the beach all the time. So can you explain yeah. that? Very, very nice. You were Beautiful asking. painting. Want to explain this painting to us, please? Yeah. If, if <laughs> uh, there's, there is a, there is a, a word, a, a word from somebody who said, if I were to explain the painting, I would have become a writer. 
<laughs> That's good. We, okay, I agree. I agree with I'll you. It's, it. it's what everybody I, sees. What I'm interested in is the difference in color, the smoothness, or I like to to caress colors. You know, I like when colors yeah. are like you want to caress them with your yeah. hand, or you want to smell them. You know, and or yeah. you want to to jump in it. That is what I'm interested in, in colors, that it gives you a very sensi sensitive feeling, emotional. Do we have another painting, Erica? That's very pretty. This could be a landscape and probably when that, it That comes looks like a William de Kooning. It's beautiful. Wow. That's yeah. classic. That is, a, that is an abstract landscape. It is. It's you know, Erica, uh, Garrett, in some of my paintings, I find it interesting that I paint it a certain way and yet people turn it upside down or sideways and they see something else in it. That's one of the reasons I never sign it right away because they're always turning it this way and yeah. that way. Not in the back. <laughs> I don't, I, I normally, I'm not, I'm, I'm a consistent, inconsistent person. Normally, I don't sign them in front for two reasons. The first reason is the same as you just said, Neil. It could be the other way around sometimes, not always. But the second reason is I'm never sure is it finished. So if I put a signature, then it's finished. Then I, yeah, then I, I really have to have the feeling it's finished. But otherwise, you know, an abstract painting is never finished. Well, someone once asked me, when is the painting finished? And I say, when I get the check. <laughs> when you buy and, it. Uh, Take it out of my and, gallery and finish. Anyway, um, Garrett, you say that colors are your passions and the vibrancy and the energy, and I understand that. Do you feel your colors help heal at times, not only you, but other people? Like a Do you feel a healing? I'm, I'm convinced they are healing, and I get feedback like this, that people really feel lift, spirit, not spirit, their spirit is lifted. And I started painting when I worked as a consultant in the industry, where it is all ugly and no aesthetics and all goal orientated, you know, like brain thing. And I felt I missed something with my body and I miss aesthetics. And that was when I started to paint because I needed the colors to, to nourish another side in myself, which was neglected by the work I did, which was a very interesting work. So I think that is what reflects a little bit of my paintings. The fact that that this you is nourishing. One, review, one reviewer wrote, your art makes my heart warm and happy and my mind full of imagination. And I get the same thing. Tell us, do you have a very imaginative mind? Does it flow all the time? Or does it-, just, it, it Right. Once in a while. Or are you creative every day? Do I have a very, I didn't imagine it. Do you, do you feel like you want to create, like you want to make art every day or just once no, in a while? I, I feel, no, I, when I'm, I'm, now I'm not in my studio, which is in Spain. When I, I don't feel like I have to do it now, but now I miss it because I haven't been painting for five weeks or longer. And I feel the nourishing side. I you, who are you now? Are you in Germany now? I'm in Germany now, yes. Which but city? I spent in Bonn. So that's where Bonn. you live, okay. Yes, okay. and that's the former capital of Germany, very long. And how, often, and how often do you get over to Spain? With a car, we're driving. <laughs> with, a car, with a car. But he means, and how are you going to go soon? I hopefully in, in about 10 days or oh, so. Oh, good, okay, very but good. The car is the only way you're sure that you can go there because the, all right. the flights are in this moment very difficult right. to be. But Jared, you, you did shows all over the world and a lot in Asia. Is that true? 
Mm-hmm. I, I have been traveling all over the world, yes, no, probably. It says here, Silk Road, Bhutan, Ladakh. You were really in those places? Yes. You were in Ladakh? Yeah. Wow. Ladakh. Could you, could you describe it? That's like Pakistan, India, China, right on the border, right? Yes, Something like it that. is. Yes. Who goes there? I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you go to a, li- a lake where you have the border to Tibet. But we also yeah. travel to Western China and also parts of Tibet. So that was very fascinating. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, wow. We go to Maine and... Uh... Yeah. Occasionally I see New Jersey on, on the television. That's about it. That's amazing. Neil's in Brooklyn and I'm in Manhattan. We're really far apart. But, I mean, these are... What is it like painting on the Silk Road? I didn't even know that existed anymore. It is. It's in, it, it, it exists. And it, it's fascinating. And, of course, now we have the new Silk Road, which is... Right. Much. So but, you didn't but, see Marco Polo? You never met Marco Polo? No. Oh, by accident. Not. We missed him. Not even by accident. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. So anyway, um, do you have any other questions, Dave, that you'd like to share no, before we move on? We have uh, Shaolun. It was great speaking to you. Gary, yeah, we're going we'll to we'll come back. Your work is amazing. You have a tremendous history. You've traveled the world. You've touched people's lives with your energy and your painting. I think it's unbelievable. And we hope to speak with you in a little bit. Thank okay. you very much. Don't leave. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank My you. My pleasure. We'll see you soon. There we Thank have Shalun. Hi, okay. how are you? Hi, Shalun. Hi, how where, are you? Where are you right now? Ha, I'm sorry because today I have the doctor appointment. That's why I late. I can't go to my studio right now. No problem. I, I am in outside in Riverside in East River. Long Island. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Long Island City. I knew it was Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> we're Long Island. Here for a minute. Yeah. You can yes. look, you see Manhattan behind you. Yeah. I, I yeah, didn't see Manhattan, Manhattan from Mongolia. Yeah. It was amazing. Anyway, your view, the view is beautiful. So welcome, yes. Shalom. You are an artist, an art collector, and a curator. You were born in Inner Mongolia and have lived in Mongolia, China, and I believe you're living in New York City now, correct? Yes. Right. It is my understanding that the attack of September 11th has inspired a new artistic creativity within you. Can you share with us what your art was like before 9-11 as to what it is like after 9-11? Okay. So my life is uh, for three, three different cultures mixed together. I was born in Mongolia and grew up in Beijing, China. Then, in uh, 1990, I moved to New York. So I just using my art, study for Western and Eastern art. Because when I moved to New York, I first time I saw a lot, very masterpiece in New York City. That's why I very loved New York. And live in New York, I created my art. I started for traditional Western style oil painting in my college. And when I moved to New York, I saw so beautiful, different modern art. That's why I started to try to change my mind. I started to try another style for 3D, so for 2D, the fine art. Then changed to Sakakton installation. Then finally I go into Ursula. The lesson in my whole the art artwork is changing this situation right now. Shaolun, you yes. paint a lot of horses. I noticed yes. a lot of your paintings are horses, and to me, that's not the Western style; it's more Eastern style. Yes. Uh, what, what, what do horses do to inspire you to create so many paintings like that? Yeah, because you know, I mean, Mongolia. When I in, in uh, children in Mongolia, they have a very empty space, only only this grass and sky and a lot of animals. And my family have a thousand houses. I started to raise training horse from uh, seven years old. We must be the train protection in Mongolia and no 
car, no road, only use horse. So everybody and drove a horse? Yes. <laughs> I oh. trained here to many, many horses. That's why so I love the horse very much. Yeah. Um, you say that your focus, I read it about you, shifted to what's called earthworks. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to the audience what earthworks are? So I use um, earthwork is I, I especially in after before let me see before 1997 I am in college so I saw a lot of pollution in coming in my countryside then people said oh this pollution is a bad bad weather coming from Mongolia and I was wondering uh, I back to the Cold oil. I said this is result from cold oil. Cold oil with Russia and China everywhere now. They test a lot of nuclear tests in very close from my home line. Wow. Then this after ten years, by the nineteen seventy, they have a river tree, every everything is died. Tree that the river is gone, the people kiss the skin is cancer, it's a blood cancer. That's why I, I have this question, why the human that broke this in nature to make into to bad, bad things. And today we have whole world and the coronavirus came. This results back to, you know, human, uh, you know, this in, you know, this in the war, people fighting different religious, different, different culture, very difficult to put together. My work, why go into Earth's work? Because I see, I can't use the pen and paper and canvas. I can't say, I'm not enough to say my thing. I have to use different power material from nature, like a fire, water, something like this. My Let me ask you another, yeah, I want to ask you a question. Did you bring any of your paintings with you? Does Erica have any of your paintings? Oh, there it oh, is. Yeah. If you could, oh, that's beautiful. Can you explain that to us? Yeah. This painting is I used the rice uh, rice paper in Chinese rice paper and uh, acrylic and watercolor. The very this is huge size. Uh, this is three meters by three meters. The four pieces put together. If you see the detail, inside have a lot of different uh, characters. I have the Mongolian character. I have English or Chinese character is I use different color. That is my big thing. This is horse. Horses, human friend, especially any everybody like the horse. That's why horses in my life also my artist. I paint a lot of horse. Oh, here's some more beautiful paintings. Yeah, these, these are installation works, mostly sculpture. Yes. This uh, on the right top. This uh, uh, why I using this uh, shape idea from this Mongolian yurt. Everybody knows the Mongolian yurt, so I am grew up in Mongolian yurt. So that's why Mongolian yurt they have this called the tono. Tono means it skylight. So in Mongolia, not too in city countryside, very beautiful sky. You know, clothes. That's why I think this shape should be going to different, different. Uh, you know, this sculpture. I started use this size in in 19, 1990. So when I moved to New York, I I visited museum. The large, beautiful sculpture and uh, and some some installation. Very nice. It's amazing. Um, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected you? Oh, this is very terrible. So I, I was complete my very huge, huge earth work in last year, in August in Mongolia. I used 800 horses and 500 burlap. I used half ton acrylic painting in outside uh, use animal movement action painting in outside. Then I have the, another big traveling exhibition in New York, in Europe. When I back to New York in February this year, uh, the coronavirus is coming. 
that people, you know, stop every cell. Hold this business is stop. I mean, artists are thinking, but there's a big problem. So I started to thinking about why this coronavirus, the big virus that comes the whole world. We have big problem, big trouble. I thinking about, you know, this back to 1960, cold war. Today, this coronavirus, the result coming from cold. It's a, I call this new cold war. Really, artists thinking about how to use our, uh, you know, technique and a brush paint. I have some abstract painting and doing my studio. So I really Shalom. this is yes. You, you exhibited the burning skylight tunu or tofu yes. in New York. Could we? Yes. See, is it still in New York? Yeah, I this uh, burning tunu, this video art, uh, Shashama. Yeah, okay. video art. This Shashama organization, Shashama the Gallery, the 42nd Street in Broadway. Oh, they, wow. right yeah, here. Yeah, they show, show that my, this video art, the 10 minute video art for one month. Shashama organization, they have theater. The theater before this, uh, <clears throat> before this uh, show, on the 10 minute, they, they, you show my, Ursula land art called Burning Tone. I want to follow up with one last question before we say um, we move on. You represent the sensitivity of the World Trade Center, the disaster, the COVID pandemic, the Cold War of the 60s. On your Instagram, I noticed a picture of Hitler with a little boy, and that was one of the worst um, horrific times in the world of destruction. Is that part of the sensitivity um, of representing that picture? I'm trying to understand what the picture represents. Yes, you're right. So, yeah, I, I, I a little bit, uh, yeah, this is which which painting you're talking about? Can you show? I don't think I, you know which picture you're saying. Talking when about. I went on Instagram, it was the first picture of Hitler with a little boy caressing his face. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of painting. Okay. I don't think you I, I have to read you this paragraph, Neil. I, okay, go ahead. We have to move on, but please read it. We have just one little paragraph. Somebody wrote about your works. It's uh, def I don't think you wrote it because it was a it was a reviewer. It said the mysterious aspect of each work is the psychic residue left between the inevitable distance of conscious reality and unconscious processes of recording the beauty of his painterly application. This is the gift which this artist so provocatively brings to the world. And it stems from a rare discernment and the capacity to see beyond sight's everyday parameters. That's like an unbelievable, powerful statement of your sculptures and your and your installation art. You obviously moving people. Anyway, Shalom, it's amazing. We think your work is amazing. It's a pleasure being able to talk to you. Abe and I look forward to getting together with people in New York one day. A restaurant will be open. We could get together. We will be back with you, and we're just going to move on to Daniel Robinson. Thank you. We're going to come back in the end. Okay, thank you very much. Stay on. Stay on. Okay. Also, it's, it's... Hi, Daniel. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> Hi. Um, Erica, we're doing an interview with Daniel. Right. Okay. right. Then we'll have everybody. So Daniel, it seems to me what an amazing career you have. You are a classically trained composer. You have worked in rock, avant-garde, hip hop, and other genres. You have published 26 albums under the names Ether Gun and the hip hop group X-Ray Poets, if I'm correct. You have the Ambient Gallery video series with now 71 videos. You promote artists from all over the world. Ethan Gunn came out with the Steampunk Affair, and now you are working, or maybe it's out on your next album, perhaps it's out, The Rite of Steam. Is that correct? Yes. Oh. 
Can you tell the audience what steampunk music is? Well, the art style of steampunk is basically Victorian, end of the 19th century, top hats and uh, so forth, mixed in with ray guns and kind of like Matrix attitude. And so the period of the end of the 19th century mixed in with like uh, steam engines, dirigibles, all kinds of stuff that was happening at the end of the 19th century, which is very intense uh, industrial revolution time, mixed in with the kind of a rebellious punk attitude. And there have been some movies. Uh, there's the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. There's one Love that was that really Sean uh, Connery. Great movie. Right? Sean Connery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one. And so it's kind of this uh, almost a comic book idea. The thing I liked about it was that it mixed all of the genres together that I was working with musically, like classical music, punk music, rock music, and other electronic stuff could all be fit together under the same umbrella. The only difference with what I do is that because of the training and study I've done, I go back to the 16th century instead of just rock or just- Was that what we heard in the original uh, video tonight? Which that was before steampunk. That's more of just the regular old music that I- like classical music, like Victorian music, yet with an edge. Right. The, the main thing I would say about that is the idea of, uh, I agree with the idea about where there's art, there's life. The idea is almost of a wavelength, almost like a broadcast frequency that comes through a painting or you can hear somebody singing and you don't know what the words are, but you know they're telling a story somehow, whatever that thing is. And, uh, or a sculpture, like it just speaks to you from a hundred feet away and you've got to go over and see what it is. And this is before you get to see any of the detail. You don't know who it is. It's just something came across. So I would look at paintings that I would see on the internet, contact the painter and put the stuff together to tell a story because paintings tell a story. It may be a frozen instant in time, but you look at it and you see the story coming out of it. Your eyes what were you, what were you like as a boy? Were you a daydreamer <laughs> in school? Did you oh, think of all these things, steam engines and all yeah. these things? I was always getting in trouble somehow. It was, that was part of my inventiveness, I guess. Uh, but I studied a lot of science and, uh, and so forth. And I started writing music when I was around eight. And then uh, when I was 15, I was writing symphonies. And I thought that all the kids wow. did that. And I was just kind of behind the what curve. Mozart and Beethoven. Yeah, stuff like that. So, so Daniel, you have the audience of, of hundreds and hundreds of people now. Tell an artist why he should call you up or go on your site and hire you to create a music or a video for his art or her art. Tell, tell us. Well, when I was talking to Lucas the other night, we were talking about the documentary that he's putting together about a light in the pandemic. And what we liked when we were talking is we realized that we're both smarter, like our IQs went up from talking to each other. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> So I believe I believe you brought a video with you that we could see. Yeah, um, the one I did for Rita Bazimalik. Yes, we interviewed her two weeks ago. Wonderful lady, great artist from India. Erica, do we have that video, uh, music? Uh, and while it's playing, can you tell us whose art is behind there? You have beautiful art behind the music. There. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Next time we'll put mine or any of the other fantastic <laughs> artists out there. The gallery and we can see this too.
seem to have hi there i'm on alone hi abe that was oh, there you are i absolutely amazing it just puts you into a mood it's also another healing process and that with the art wow i shouldn't have any problems in life uh, <laughs> daniel do you do anything besides compose music do you write dance sing uh i also have written some books uh you have I, yeah a lot of things about what Oh, uh, some science fiction satire stuff. Uh, kind of like uh, a lot of uh, quantum physics, but there are jokes. You in wrote books about quantum physics, like so yeah. joke books. Yeah, chaos theory, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> How did yeah. you go from quantum physics to music so easily? Well, the the thing I feel when looking at paintings, I feel more like a painter because I work a in an electronic studio. I work with performers as well, but it's the idea of you're sitting there with yourself, figuring out what you want to do. And my feeling about art is when you see a piece of art, it shows you yourself. You see some new piece of art you've never seen before. It tells you something about yourself. So in my music, I wind up, it's kind of a meditation where it's telling a story. It's not just sitting there being music or trying to sell you cars or something. It's trying to get you to look into your own mind and see what you think. And it tells a story. Paintings tell a story. The music doesn't. It fits very well together in that way. It makes something that doesn't replace the opportunity to look at a painting in a gallery or on your wall, but it's a new form put together. I want to, tell, know, you, where, I want okay. to tell you something. Uh, the, the, the author, I forgot who the author is now, Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass with like the top children fantasy books about a hundred years ago, maybe 150 years ago. And the Queen of England calls him up and says, I, I love these books. Do you have any other books? He says, I wrote nine other books. I've got to read them. I love these books. He wrote nine books on physics. <laughs> she said, what the heck? That's not what I was expecting. So he very similarly jumped from physics to fantasy or art and you know and, and children's stuff. So you know, that Daniel, I work with Alzheimer's patients also, and I work with them through art. And not everybody, every time you get a response through art, but you have other mediums such as music, and you'd be surprised how if you play music from the 40s or the 50s, it just opens up the mind. Or So music is just a wonderful medium as art and other um, things to take care of to work with the Alzheimer's patient. Well, anyway, good. anyway, Abe, do you have another question? Because now we're going to bring everyone we're on. Bring everybody back to the show tonight. Wow. Yeah. First of all, you are all amazing. Please bring everyone on, Daniel. Everybody. Um, I'd like to first of all, Erica. Do you have where we could reach everybody? Let's say we'll start with Marta. Does she have a website that you could put on? Um, people can access on the board. My site is martabonimon.com. Okay, her name. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to have Erica there, it is. It just came on. W -W -W okay, point. that's fine. In other words, you could replay this over and over and send it to people so they'll have a place to contact you. How about you, Garrett? Do you have something, uh, a website to be reached or a number? Is Garrett here? Here she is. Hi. <coughs> you hear us, Garrett? It could be as far as we get. What's your website or your telephone number? My website, yours? Yes. My, my, my website? And then a little G for Garrett. And yeah. then Offerland Hampel. Uh, it's G Upperland dash Hampel dot com. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulty. We'll come back to you before. Daniel, where could people reach you? The easiest way would be to go to either gun on Facebook. Either gun. Yeah. 
Daniel Robbins. Yeah, uh, it's, but it's the title of the page is Ether Gun. Oh, Ether Gun. Okay, right. Ether Gun. Okay. And also Shaolin, we have to ask you. Shaolin, you're sitting in the dark. Uh, we see beautiful. <laughs> we can see you. So you okay? There it is, Ether Gun. Shaolin, do you have a website you want to tell us about? I don't know if he hears it. Shaolin. Okay. Hey, I had to gallery QCC gallery dot edu. QC gallery dot Wow, I'm sorry, so my battery is gone. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have Eric get it for you. A, will Erica be able to add it on? I, I believe she can add it on the end of the show, uh, and we'll have everybody's website. Or everybody could go on to Shalom Batar yeah. website and look him up. It's C H A O L U N B A A T A R. And you could reach him through there, or you could call him and try to reach him through the, everybody through the gallery of Saphir. Saphir of gallery. Uh, does anyone have any comments they'd like to say? I, oh, here it is. I have written my number five five Brazil two one Rio nine eight five six two six three nine three. It's written here in our chat. Very nice. Shaolin, do you have a phone number you want to share with us? His battery must have gone. Um, hi, Garrett. Um, do you have a phone number? We do. We oh, get. We no. need here. Marta's phone number. You have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I can say. Well, do you no. talk much? Do you? Okay. So anyone who wants to reach Garrett, they could go through Safira Ventura in New York, in the gallery, and they would be more than happy to uh, forward your messages to all of our artists tonight, to Daniel, to Garrett, to Marta, to Shalun. Does anyone like to share anything else with us before we close? Thank you very much for Thank being you. here. It was a pleasure. From Abe and I, it's truly an honor. It's a pleasure. It's fantastic meeting you. We hope to get to meet you in person one day. Um, Daniel, it might be easier for you. Maybe you'll go out for dinner with Abe and I. We'll invite Shaloni sure. to New York. Whoever's in New York. If you're in New York, you're welcome to contact us. Elkie Nonaria, this show is good vibes. I like that. Good vibes. She's my friend. She is friend. my... Ah, oh, you just my brains, my and also another friend, Justo Davila, a great poet from Rio. He was yeah. there too. Yeah. Okay, basically, Eric is gonna close. My sister okay. Francini, she's <laughs> dancing in the video. <laughs> I will ask you to dance with me, all of you. <laughs> okay, Eric is gonna close the show, and as she asks, we all stay on for about a minute or two afterwards, then we could all come back in for just a friendly chat. Yeah. Thank you very much, everything from Thank Abe and I, right. from New York City and Germany and, and, and Rio and, de Janeiro. Mongolia and Spain and Brazil. And in, the, and in the dark on Long Island. And in the dark on Long Island. Island. Yes. Bye. Bye, guys.